All right, so this is video explains how to compute the weighted average cost of capital and how to put it in the spreadsheet. So at this point, we've calculated the cost of debt, we've calculated the cost of equity using the dividend growth model, we've calculated the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model. So now we need to put it all together to compute the weighted average cost of capital. We're going to assume that our firm has a tax rate of 35% for the weighted average cost of capital purposes. So the first thing we need to do is go to Morningstar and get some information about long-term debt from the balance sheet. So just if you'll type in or Google Morningstar and then your ticker symbol for your company. And then we want to look at the financials for our company. And then once we're in there, we'll uh, want to choose the balance sheet. I think the default is the income statement, so we want to click on the balance sheet. And we're looking for the dollar value for the long-term debt for the most recent completed 12 months. This would be for my particular company, December of 2013. Look down for long-term debt, and we can see uh, this value of 1,421, this is in millions, so this is $1,421,000,000 worth of long-term debt. So that is the book value of the long-term debt. So we want to record that in our spreadsheet. And then I need to make a market value adjustment. Remember, we want the market value of the long-term debt. So we're going to assume that the ratio of market value to book value for our bonds is the same as the ratio of market value to book value for all long-term debt. So to do that, calculate that market value adjustment, let's, we're going to simply divide the market value of our bonds, all the bonds, together, divided by the book value of all the bonds together. So you can see here I have $800,000 worth of bonds, excuse me, $800 million worth of bonds, and book value and the market value was 904 so 904 divided by the 800 that gives me a market value adjustment of 1.131 again just the market value of the bonds divided by the book value of the bonds so then I can calculate the market value of debt simply as the the book value of long-term debt multiplied by this market value adjustment and that's going to give us the market value of debt. Then the next thing we need to do is calculate the market value of equity. So we're going to take the price per share for my company was $39.77 multiplied by the number of shares outstanding. We got that pulled out earlier. That's for my company. It's 104 million shares outstanding. So 104 million times the stock price per share of $39.77 gives a market value of equity of about $4,135,000,000. So I add up the market value of debt, the market value of equity to give me the market value of the firm. And then once I have the market value of the firm, I can calculate my weight. So market value uh, weight for debt is going to be the market value of debt divided by the market value of the firm. And likewise, the market value for equity is going to be the market value of equity divided by the market value of the firm. And now I can calculate the uh, weighted average cost of capital. And I have two ways of doing that. One with the discounted growth model, which for me, I come up with about 8.3% cost of equity using that dividend growth model. And I came up with about 6.2% using the capital asset pricing model. So I just need to plug in, in each one of these cells, the weighted average cost of capital formula using these two weights and my weighted average yield to maturity that I calculated earlier for the bonds, multiplied by the, the weight of debt, and then of course by one minus the tax rate, just like the formula would be. And then add to that the weight for equity and the required return for the equity, both for the discounted growth model formula and the capital asset pricing model formula. discount growth 
you can see here that, that formula. I'm not doing anything special. This is just the weighted average cost of capital formula. And we're going to ignore any preferred stock. I'll go ahead and put in uh, my ticker symbol right here. I like this. I go to print, just print the selected area. And that's it. That's all we have to do for this particular submission.